Hey guys, so you can use a shrink wrap, something like a lattice modifier. I'm just going to go over that real quick. Some guys are curious how to utilize shrink wrap, and there's a number of different ways or techniques I'll use with it, but this is one that it's kind of fun. You don't really see on YouTube, so I figure some of you will enjoy this one, but let me go ahead and uh, knock out a shape here, and we're going to go ahead and subdivide it one time, set it to keep corners, something like this and apply it all right so you're working on a mesh and you're trying to just create something kind of cool and interesting you do a bunch of editing on it and try to just make something like this perhaps i'm going to apply this one too okay and so but let's say we want this top section to have a different curve and we already got all this geo going on so how do we make a curve well we, we can shrink wrap it but we use a different mesh we'll use a plane Go into edit mode. Uh, we can just lay it out over the surface real quick, like we're doing this here, and um, kind of match it maybe a little. And we can do some loop cuts, basically. Higher resolution or lower resolution, whatever you want here. Maybe not higher than this, but for the base mesh, like higher or lower. Anyways, um, we can set this to viewport display wire. Okay, and if we want, we can also uh, use subdivision on this. So we can hit control one through five, set it to keep corners maybe. We can turn on end result as well. So now it's just the isoline display that we're modifying. And we can change the shape of it very quickly. We can make it match our base if we wanted to, or we could change it slightly like this. And maybe you only want certain parts of this mesh to be influenced or affected. So we're going to take this section here, hit control G, assign to a new vertex group. Okay. So when we add a shrink wrap modifier now, we can sample this new shape, but we can use the vertex group. So it's only going to influence those vertices that we had selected and added to that group. And so now, we can use it like this. And if we ever want to just, you know, um, increase or decrease resolution here, we can do that. It's not a big deal. So we can refine our curves however we see fit and um, get it kind of close to what we want. It's not always like a perfect match. But we can get it pretty close. When we're done with the shrink wrap, we just apply it and delete the shape if you need to. But if you ever want to add additional little edits or changes or whatever you can so this looks like a double no yeah i don't really want to do that necessarily but we'll do a bevel here kind of reshape it a bit but for the most part that's the trick it's nothing real special it's just a lot of fun to play with sometimes so we can do our insets, holding control, boundary select. Yeah, there you go. Make really cool stuff very fast, basically. If you want to keep, you know, working on it, obviously keep working on it. You do other edits, perhaps. That might make it look a little bit better. Try a weird quad right there real quick, see if that works out. Almost did, not quite. A little more resolution, it kind of does. All right. And so, yeah, you can play with this idea. Like if we want to even use the mesh we have, we can separate it, duplicate it, separate it. I use machine tools to just quickly separate things usually. It's like the faces. Control four or four or whatever with machine tools. Maybe reduce it. And I just want to create a little bit of a curve in here. So I need to add that subdivision, make sure it's doing what I want. Go back to our base mesh, select those faces. Oh, select everything, remove from that group, and then add it to the same group, maybe. We can do another shrink wrap. 
use group. Uh, we can use hard ops to set it to wireframe. So we don't have to go over to that, over to that menu. Get something like that maybe. So it's such a nice little deformer basically is all it is. And we can try maybe you know, reducing some of this in here too. You know, like we can do something like that. So then all we got to do is apply the shrink wrap. Oh, it needs to be in front of that subdivision if we're using it in this manner. So we probably didn't need to get rid of all those edges. I didn't think we did, but let's try it like this. And then get rid of that top one. See if that helps. Oh, maybe the, maybe the, maybe we need to add it to the vertex group. Sometimes you got to fiddle with things a little bit. If I can get a hold of it. Turn things off in edit mode sometimes. There we go. Look at that. But uh, these down here do not need that. Cool. Now we can apply it. All right. So if you ever find that technique useful and you want to use it, you can put it to use now. I'm going to dissolve those and just redouble that. Symmetrize right here, I think. Set flow on that one. Set flow add-on is great for things like that. So it finishes it out basically. All right, but you're off to a start now. Uh, if you ever got to, you know, correct this shape, it's easier to do. But anyways, yeah, that's the uh, the trick with shrink wrap, and use it as you see fit. All right, check it out the next one.